Well, hello again from Kingston, where as you can probably gather, we had our first serious snowfall of the season. Just what a project manager wants to see as he's trying to wind up the, uh, the whole business. But it's been a good week, some remarkable uh, activities, including a safety rodeo, which we'll explain, and uh, some other important events. Be sure and watch the whole thing. I'll catch you at the end. Thanks for watching. On Monday, gravel removal on the West End continued in fine weather. Now lacking a dock, the work boats are lifted into the water by telehandlers. After creating a shelf at the water's edge and placing fish refuges which will be reached at high water, the crew is laying coir or coconut matting in several layers. More about this later. Beside trucks awaiting the removal of gravel, an empty Kimco container filled up quite rapidly and not a little loudly. Despite cold temperatures, work continued to remove the rods that had supported the brackets. With one section clear, it always seemed that there was another waiting. But there was no stopping this crew. Time and again, a crane box would be lowered, filled with redundant materials, and then lifted onto the deck for their disposal. In bright sunshine, on the east end, sharp landscaping brought in more topsoil, supporting their tree planting work. Some trees can be more reluctant than others to leave their transit containers. In the morning and afternoon, Black and MacDonald were busy placing banner arms on the lampposts. If we needed further evidence of completion approaching, the departure of equipment from the East End would serve. Let the anthem rise up. As Monday draws to a close, let's have a look at the environmental work on the West End. Tuesday saw Black and MacDonald back on the bridge installing banner arms. Accurate, consistent placement is critical. There was more topsoil for the east end. And the Genic machine was relocated to continue its work. On Gore Road, there was more evidence of a wind down as the temporary safety fence there for several months was finally removed. On the west end, the removal of gravel from the temporary causeway continued relentlessly. Shoring boxes released by this work were seen to leave on the east end. This is a great thing because they've been sold to local companies who will go on to reuse them for years to come. And one of the two bridge buggies, only recently brought to the West End, returned eastward. We'll leave Tuesday with a look at the next layer of coir matting going down as part of the remediation work on the West End. Wednesday morning saw work begin in a light snowfall. After some careful repositioning, the Genic crew resumed work, defying the weather. By the end of the day, with the snowfall over, working safely and deliberately, they had removed the last of the support brackets remaining on the bridge. Just yards away, 
enjoying the same changeable weather, the crew and the bridge buggy were addressing the rods left behind. Up on the margin of Highway 15, the Black and MacDonald team, who never lack for work, were busy finalising some more installations involving cabling. The Gatineau-based road signing company, Senior Beck, was active in the same area. As many as five trucks were running to support the removal of gravel by the excavator down on the east side. No day would be complete without seeing Rosa and Tim from Eagle Eye Professional Cleaning Services. Thursday saw the return of cold but clement weather and Black and McDonald's engaged on the east abutment. Working on a junction box, the vehicles may have provided a useful windbreak. Drilling an access hole is one thing, cleaning it out is another. On the new service road close to the library, blocks were placed to discourage vehicular trespass. In a complete change of scene, the important but often overlooked work of maintaining the turbidity curtains was taking place. And when the work is done, there's always the challenging business of getting the boats out of the water. Well into Thursday afternoon, a truck arrived with a cargo of coir logs, which were taken down to the dock remediation area. Out on the causeway, the excavators had been busy all afternoon. Shoring boxes from the penultimate eco-passage had already been removed. It was an opportunity to see something that I had not shown you before. There's some very dexterous handling involved in removing these shoring boxes and the crane mats that sit atop them. Late in the day, the bar excavator which had been working the east side gravel moved to the west. Friday started bright and sunny after a significant overnight snowfall. The Genic machine which would be stowed later in the day was the platform for some touch up and finishing work. Black and McDonald, starting on the east side after blowing themselves and their vehicles clear of snow, moved to the west. Once there, they started work by the west abutment on a junction box. At 10 o'clock, all work on the site came to a halt for what is known as the roughly quarterly safety rodeo. These events involve touring different stands that emphasise particular safety issues. On this occasion, understandably, a stand dealt with concerns about cold weather operations. This stand was raising funds for the United Way with a cornhole competition or a beanbag toss. The rodeo is an opportunity to bring the whole crew together and give them a hot lunch. It was back to work in the afternoon though, securing this navigation light. The bar construction team was busy on the east side, tidying up the sides of Gore Road and extracting gravel from below. With more and heavier snow in the forecast, Sharp saw fit to remove equipment, including this skid steer. And we'll go to wildlife this week watching the snowplow work Gore Road.
Well, busy week. And although we're expecting a major snow event this weekend, I hope next week will be just as successful and we'll be uh, looking towards the opening of the bridge before Christmas. Thanks for paying attention to this channel and if you would be willing to do so, I'd really welcome your subscription.